Hi, my name is Alex Komorowski, and I'm a product manager on Chrome's Open Web Platform team. The web platform is composed of a large collection of interoperable standards that represent a solid foundation for building powerful apps. New standards are born on the cutting edge, where various organizations experiment with new capabilities. Those capabilities that capture the imagination of the broader community may eventually become a formal part of the web platform, while others may fade away. Today, I want to show you a few examples of some of the cool stuff you can do on the cutting edge. Now, not all the capabilities I'll show you today have been formally standardized yet. Some of them only work in Chrome today, and so others are still actively being implemented in Chrome. So I'll use just a tiny bit of magic to make this stuff work. A custom boat of Chrome here, a flag there, a tiny bit of extra code. My goal is simply to give you a preview from the cutting edge and get you as excited as I am about the future of the web platform. We'll start off today with uh, the web platform's historic strengths and how we're improving upon those. So one of the best things about the web platform is it's so easy to get started. In fact, you don't even need an IDE if you don't want one. You can just use any text editor. And of course, it has the world's shortest hello world, just the text, hello world. Go back to Chrome, refresh, and there it is. And of course, it's compile step, can't be beat. Just change it, hello, internet. Save and refresh, and that's your compile step. Let's dive into a, a quick example. What I have here is just a little toy, uh, toy example with uh, just very simple behavior. When I check on off these boxes, it will update the label. The code behind this is pretty straightforward. I just have a little bit of styling, then I have a div, a class of toggle, a span where the text will show up, the scribes, a checkbox, a checkbox with a very little, a small amount of script, and a label that will update. But the thing that drives me crazy looking at this is the fact that I've repeated myself three times for these three different toggles. What happens if I add another one and I forget to include a label or something? It just won't work. Every other platform has a way for you to find these building blocks uh, and build on top of them. Now with the web platform, you can kind of hack it. You can use JavaScript frameworks, but it's not very robust. Well, a new standard called Web Components fixes this. So with Web Components, this example would reduce down to this. I'd include my, my component where it's defined, and then just replace all those examples of uh, div class equals toggle with div is a toggle. The component itself is very straightforward, very similar to what I had before. I'm using style. I've scoped it down so it will only affect the component and not leak out into the rest of the document. And I have basically the same content. Now that's a pretty simple example. Let's switch to something a slight bit more complex. Here I have a very simple document. Uh, again, the code behind this is, of course, very simple. It's an article, a section, and some headings. But let's say that I want this thing to actually be, say, a tab strip so that I can click between different tabs, um, so that I can even use keyboard shortcuts to switch between them, and tabs that don't fit on screen will fit into a nice overflow menu. Now, with web components, this is really simple for me to do as an author. I just switch from this to this. Uh, I just basically include a link to the, where the component is defined, and I say, hey, by the way, that article, it's actually a tab strip. The tab component itself, very simple, some styles are scoped down, a little bit of HTML, and a little bit of JavaScript. But of course, I write this once, and then can reuse it very easily. Now, if I inspect this with the web inspector, what I'll see is that even though clearly there's extra spans and divs and styling and scripting going on to make all this work, what I see in the web inspector is basically what I had put in before before this thing was a tab strip. Um, so what this does is actually enforces a great abstraction barrier where it's not possible for random people to come in and muck with the internals of the component. So the component authors can know that their stuff will always work. Now, of course, the web platform, these components are just like any other block. You can style them in really quick, really amazing ways very easily. So let's say I want this thing to be blurred. Well, that's really simple. I'll use filter blur um, and bam, it blurs right away. Let's say I want it to rotate in 3D space. Well, that's built into transforms with a 3D rotation. I've got a uh, transition defined in this already, so it will start rotating smoothly in 3D space. But of course, on the web platform, all these things are blocks. You can swap them in really easily. So say instead of an article, what I wanted instead was a video. So I'll edit this. I'll paste in uh, a video with a WebM video. And bam, we have that video rotating in 3D space directly in the browser without any plugins. Now, of course, this is kind of a, a silly example, but this is a more realistic example. This is a real uh, page that uses fonts, web fonts, to get some really cool graphical effects. And as you switch between uh, pages, it has this really neat 3D zooming effect. They're using the same basic primitives as the examples I showed you, just with a little bit more script and a li little bit more of a sense of style. One of the things that's historically been a little bit annoying about the web platform is layout. So the web platform initially targeted static, simple documents, and the layout primitives reflected that. But nowadays, we're building very complicated apps on top of the platform. And so we end up using tons of absolute positioning and, uh, and floats, and it gets very complicated very quickly. 
Well, those days are over because now we have new layout primitives like Flexbox. So here I have just a quick mock-up of the Google Plus home screen from Android in the web platform. Now you can see that as I resize this, it will actually take, uh, reorient itself to take best available use of the screen space. The code behind this is very simple. I have just a few divs to define the content, and then I have just a little bit of styling. There's no absolute positioning, there's no floats, it's very straightforward. But the other thing to notice here that's really important is that there is no script. That behavior where it reflows when, I ch when the orientation changes is done entirely declaratively in CSS. But of course the web platform isn't just for desktop, and this exact same example runs on mobile. So here I have the exact same example running in uh, Chrome for Android beta. Now you can see also that as I rotate the phone, it will change its orientation again automatically. But let's say I wanted to change something in this page. I'm developing and I want to uh, spice it up a little bit. Well, we can do that with uh, developer tools. So here I've actually connected up my developer tools to the phone. You can see that as I hover over here, it highlights in real time the, the elements on the page. And so if I want to say spice up this body a bit with, uh, let's see, a background gradient, that's really simple to do and it shows up immediately. Now you're saying to yourself, okay, I can use the Web Inspector Big Whoop. But actually the Web Inspector, these tools have really matured a lot in the past couple of years. One of my favorite is Timeline. Uh, you just hit record, you refresh the page, and then you watch this, you get all this amazing deep information about when all the resources were loaded, the layouts, the paints, the events. This is just one of the tools in the Web Inspector uh, suite, but it's now just showing off how this suite is now a world-class suite of developer tools. One of the other things the web platform is great at is text layout. In fact, it's so good that sometimes developers on native platforms, when they want complicated text layout, will actually use a web view. And of course, we're improving here as well, learning new capabilities inspired by the print platform, like automatic ligatures and other advanced typography. Here's a cool example. So here we got a drop cap, but the cool thing is that the text flows along the edge of this Y. But of course, on, this isn't a print layout, it's not static, it's dynamic, it's the web platform. So as I resize, you can see that the text dynamically reflows around that Y. Now, the same basic primitive could be used to, for example, do more complicated effects, like here where I've got a star that's dynamically pushing all the text around it. All of this just goes to show how the web platform is improving upon its core strengths. Make sure to check out the other videos to learn about other new capabilities.